Well, today we have something here that's interesting. It's actually a newer version of the Star digital microscope. And this is the AD407. It looks pretty awesome. We actually have a seven inch screen and Andastar got up with me. They want to send me one out so we could review it. And I just thought it would be an awesome chance to look at this new microscope. It's actually nicer than the one that I bought back myself for like a thousand subscriber uh, kind of kickoff video. I couldn't wait to get my hands on that one. It's been so awesome on the bench. Like I said then, I had bought that one myself just to try it <clears throat> because I've been wanting one. So just tickle the death that um. Maybe I'm getting enough attention that uh, Anastar decided to send this new 407 to actually see how we like it. So we have our microscope with the tilt and the seven inch LCD display. The remote, the user's manual, the mini HDMI cable, which is awesome. The power cable and the light power controller, USB adapter, some hardware here, the mount, the base and the light assembly. With those two screws, we just easily mount our base to our optical bracket. We have the built-in connector supplying the power to the LED lights. This looks like this is hardware. If you wanted to mount some clips, I'll swing them out of the way for now. I don't know if I'll leave them on there or not. We'll see. Take it to the bench, we'll try it out. So back now we're the Andon Star 8407 on the bench put together. And if we cut this on, one thing we notice right off is our HDMI cable hooked up to an auxiliary or remote monitor. It also shows up on the seven inch display. So the seven inch display is very nice. And with it showing up on both, you may have already guessed it, but now if I hit okay to record, we start recording. So we have a live view here. We're recording. We have the auxiliary display showing what we're recording so we can actually look at the larger display. It's the only drawback I had after purchasing the ADS M302, it was great for the money. I had zero uh, negative things to say about it. The only drawback, it just would not record and show on the display at the same time through HDMI. So Anna Star contacted me about sending me this one to review, and um, I'm very, very grateful for it. I do, and I do enjoy using it a lot. I've, uh, I've had several days to fill with it before I did the review video. You may have already noticed how you can angle this one back instead of straight up and down, which adds a little bit of depth in the field. So I put this up here just to show how you can see a lot more depth in this little small LED. And this LED is probably 0603 LED. And am I the only one that sees Sid from Ice Age here? Anyway, as I bring over some other items here to look at. So the first item I have on the sheet I can bring over here. It's just a six lead, little small SMD component that I uh, desoldered. So you get to see some of the rise and flux build up things of that nature with a little bit better detail. And it's really there just to show that as we come on over to this capacitor, I got a lot of rosin flux still stuck to it as well. And then I want to show, now this 100 ohm resistor, when I went to check it with my meter, was showing open. So, you can see I have my real fine needle point, the finest, uh, the finest tips that I have. And I couldn't actually get a reading, even though I was fairly certain when I took this off, it was working fine. But if we use this microscope to our advantage, especially using the depth here, we can see that we're missing a lot of the, um, the contact point here on the side. So if I go across the top of this resistor using a microscope, just to make sure that I touch the solder here, and we see we do have 
we do have our 100 ohms. So the resistive film itself is still good. It's just a little end piece that I, I must have peeled off when I desoldered it. The next item I wanted to look at, use my um, meter lead to help me find it. <laughs> it is a very small uh, 402 LED. And sometimes I refer to these as like a grain of sand. If you drop it, it's gone. And uh, I even flipped it off the paper one time today and, and I like to never found it. But you can just see the depth. And I'm actually going to get a little closer with this one. So if I go to diode mode. And go to test my LED. There we go. I'm actually going to record a little bit of this to play it back so you can see it. My blue 402. So that definitely shows how helpful the microscope can be. Of course, in our um, our standby mode, which is like our live video mode, it shows us how much time we have left to record on our SD card. And this one is very similar to the 302, where it'll take up to a 32 gigabyte SD card. The optical stack is a little bit different as far as a uh, the way it's designed with the seven inch display at the end of it other than that it looks similar and we definitely have a different mount to give us a depth a better depth of field and um and one thing i like about it um where the angle it gives you a better depth and also it's more out of your way if you, if you are actually soldering so if you got a, um, your meter leads or your soldering iron in here it is more out of your way so and of course, if I was soldering, I would have this even even back a little further instead of zoomed in like I did on that 402. But this one has 3x digital zoom instead of 4x like the other one. It also comes with the same um, remote, so you can do the zooming. You could do a freeze if you wanted to freeze the shot. As you see here, it just froze on me. So if you want to do some kind of pin out on a chip and freeze, frame it. That's pretty cool. You'll have it up there and you can keep looking at it even after you don't move your stuff. Some of the other modes are the same. You can you can do your brightness and your I should have had that up a tad on the camera probably. Might be a little better actually. We have our three modes uh, very similar to the 302 where um, we have our video standby mode like we are now. We can start recording. We have our still image mode, mode where we can go and just take our pictures. Um, I'll have that up there so you can see it. And of course we have our review mode that we click M again. And this is where we can actually play back. And play back some of our video. And one thing I do want to mention, if we hold the M down and go to mode, we can do it either way. Our menu, if we hold the M down instead of mode, hold it down and go to menu. Do it again on this net setting. It's kind of neat how we can cut on our cross line. So the 302 also had the cross line. I have used it some. The AD407 does go to a new level with the um, cross line. We can actually go to lines and go to own and it's kind of neat we can go to each line we can decide what color it is whether it's on or off the width of it the direction of it so you can actually change this grid to help you um, in some situations where you might need the grid we can go to off and we can go up to changing all the lines so we can change all eight, the horizontal and the vertical. So I thought that was really neat. We can change our width. 
up to five different levels. So we can see on the, on the yellow vertical line here for reference. We can definitely change the position of it. So I just thought that was really, really neat. One thing the manual tells you is to make sure after you do a change such as this that you would actually want to save. You want to cut it off here when you power it down and not just simply hit the power button because if you hit that power button it's going to lose your changes because this cuts off the power going to the device instead of actually in a power down sequence where it actually saves the settings. So we realize now we go down we see that it, it didn't save that yellow where I had it. So in case you did want to save the changes, where there's date and time, for example, you do want to make sure after you change your date and time that you do power it down on the soft power down. One thing other than just a seven inch display also on the HD sensor, this is a four megapixel instead of three, like the 302. And of course, the HDMI output being different speaks for itself. So, of course, like I say, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not something that I purchased myself. That is one that they sent. I just want to make sure that that is stated in the review of this product. But with that being said, I'm still going to be open and honest about it. I mean, first of all, the top of it looks the same. It's got a micro SD right here. A USB it plugs into the bottom the lights are the same one difference is the way they angle this of course we discussed that but now one thing to watch is uh if this isn't tightened up really good this thing could sling over and bump something so just verify that you got this tightened up good that's just one thing you didn't have to worry about with the 302 was the way that that nut tightens up and can loosen and, uh, and fall to the right with these in place, it isn't going to probably bump anything hard, but you can see that it could actually fall and uh, bump the corner of the, the LCD display. The lights are very nice, like on the 302. They did add these little holders. I just put them on here to show that they did add them. And uh, that might be handy. It may not, but they're easily removed if you don't want them on there. I did mount my power on and off and dimming module on the corner like I did on a 302 just to keep it conveniently located there and try to neaten up the wiring. And the only other thing that I do wish it had, a little bit of different contrast on the push buttons, on the buttons for the control. But sometimes as you're looking down or a bright screen or where you're working at and the light's reflecting, sometimes when you look up, if these aren't illuminated very well, you have to kind of remember where these push buttons are. Now in this light in here, hopefully it shows up on the camera. I can see the power, the M up, down, okay, and the capture. I can see it. I can see it very well. But I I have noticed on the 302 as well as the 407 that sometimes if I got a white background or bright uh, background with the lights reflecting up and I got them up pretty high that uh, when you look up, you can't quite see the, the buttons here. Very minor detail, but just thought I would mention it. Overall, very impressed with the seven inch display. And of course we can't end the video without showing the AMD chip that I showed in the last uh, video with the 302. But there we go, there's our little Easter egg up there in the top right, AMD 1981, and the actual, I guess the board number right there coming down vertically. So we can zoom in 3X digitally here. Adds a little bit of noise, but still, still pretty good.
That almost looks like it could be some static damage right here. So just a comparison here outside of the microscope of what we looked at under the microscope. There's our AMD chip, our six pin IC, the little cap, then the 100 ohm resistor, and there's a little 402 LED. But I hope you like this review of this Andenstar AD407. It really is a nice microscope. I do thank Andenstar for sending it. If you like this video, please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.